We still have much to learn about the ancient world, but fortunately we can do that learning a piece at a time. Every time an ancient artifact is discovered, it's an opportunity to learn more about our ancestors, how they lived, what they believed, and perhaps even a hint of their personalities. What can the things you're about to see in this video teach you about the past? Let's find out. Allow us to introduce you to the so-called Mask of La Roche Qatar. There's a controversy about this historical artifact in that some people don't believe that it's a genuine historical artifact at all. If we take the stories of its supporters at face value, this is a unique example of Neanderthal rock art created inside the La Roche Cotard cave on the banks of France's Loire River 33,000 years ago and left there for archaeologists to discover in 1975. Those who believe in the authenticity of the mask say that there's clear evidence that the flint has been shaped and worked upon to resemble a human face, right down to the fact that there are bones jammed into holes in the rock where the eyes ought to be. Those who are less than convinced about the mask theory accept that the placement of the bones was deliberate, but reject the idea that Neanderthals would have deliberately attempted to sculpt a replica of a humanoid face. They think that people just see what they want to see when they look at it. Who do you think is right? Speaking of mysterious ancient stones, Artigno stone was discovered in Cornwall, England in 1998 in the ruins of Tentagel Castle. Tentagel Castle is associated with the myth of King Arthur, which is why the artifact is sometimes also known as the Arthur Stone. The stone was found within an archaeological layer that can be securely dated to the 6th century and appears to be a dedication stone but one that was broken in half and then reused to create a drain when the structure it was dedicated for was destroyed. The name Artigno comes from the lettering etched into the side of the stone in Latin. It reads as Pattern Coli Avi Fisi Artigno, which means Artigno, descendant of Paternus Collis, made this. However, the slapdash style of the inscription suggests it was carved as a form of graffiti rather than as a formal inscription. Legend has it that King Arthur was conceived at Tentingol, and some proponents of the idea that there's a historical basis for a real King Arthur claim that Artigno is an old variant of Arthur. To say that there's scant evidence to support the claim would be an understatement. The Bloomberg tablets sound like they should have something to do with the American media company. And in a way, they do. They're so named because they were found at the site of the Bloomberg Building in the financial district of the City of London, England during excavations that took place in 2010. They're archaeologically significant because they're the oldest written documents ever to be discovered in the United Kingdom, predating the Vindolanda tablets. Like the Vindolanda tablets, the Bloomberg tablets were created during the United Kingdom's ancient Roman era. Obtaining a precise date for them is impossible, but it's safe to say that they were created somewhere between the years 50 and 80 during the first century. The writing on the tablets is faint and hard to decipher, but 43 of them are general correspondence, 25 are legal documents, 8 are bookkeeping accounts, and 14 have been categorized as miscellaneous. Among the tablets are Britain's oldest financial document and details of a pre-trial hearing which goes to show how civilized the city of London was even back then. The ongoing excavations at the site of the Sanxian Du ruins in southwestern China have yielded some of the greatest archaeological discoveries in the country's recent history. As an example, here's an enormous bronze sculpture of a mythical horned beast. It weighs more than 300 pounds, is believed to be 3,000 years old, was found at the bottom of a sacrificial pit where it appears to have been deliberately deposited. It's a large piece standing three feet tall and measuring three feet long, so it would have taken a long time to complete. On the creature's horn is a tall, thin man clad in a long robe, and on the beast's chest is a depiction of a tree. Some of the other artifacts discovered from Sanxian Dui over the years suggest that the people who lived in the area 3,000 years ago worshipped a sacred tree although the specifics of the religion aren't well understood. Other bronzes have been removed from the pits of Sanxian Dui before, 
but none of such size. It's to be presumed that both the sculpture and the fact that it was thrown into the pit have a symbolic meaning, but it's a meaning that modern experts can't decipher. We're developing a bit of a British theme in this video, but let's go with it so we can tell you about another fabulous discovery from ancient times. It's a set of four Iron Age gold torques that were found by a pair of amateur metal detectorists in a field in Leakfrith, Staffordshire in February 2017. If the professional archaeologists who've since had the opportunity to assess the find or write about the discovery, the torques are the oldest examples of Iron Age gold ever found in the UK. Three of the torques are necklaces, with the fourth thought to be a bracelet. While it might be the oldest Iron Age discovery in Britain, the torques aren't actually British. An analysis of the design and composition of the artifact suggests that they're from either France or Germany. The decoration on the bracelet, however, with its loops and lines, is undeniably Celtic. All four items are thought to be around 2,400 years old and probably belong to extremely powerful or wealthy women. The discovery was officially classified as treasure and has since been acquired by a museum in Stoke-on-Trent. If we asked you to think of a famous ancient British helmet, most of you would probably think of the Sutton Hoo helmet. That's understandable. It's a fantastic artifact. However, there's another ancient British helmet worth your consideration, and it's the Coppergate helmet. It was found during the construction of the Jorvik Viking Center in York, England in May 1982. The helmet is unmistakably Anglo-Saxon in design and dates to the 8th century. The helmet was at the bottom of a pit that may have once been a well and was most likely thrown into it on purpose. Only six Anglo-Saxon helmets have survived to the present day. None of them are as well preserved as the Coppergate helmet is, and we include the Sutton Hoo helmet in that. Helmets like this were common in the British Isles and Scandinavia from the 6th century through to the 11th and are generally known as crested helmets. This particular one is very heavy and made of iron, brass, and copper. A Latin inscription on the banding of the helmet reads, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God, and to all we say Amen. Backgammon is an old game, but it's based on an even older one. The roots of backgammon can be traced to a table game called tabula, and the oldest surviving tabula set in the world is the Gloucester tabula set. Historians believe the set was created during either the 11th or 12th century and see it as an excellent example of Romanesque art. The set was found in 1983 at the site of Gloucester Castle in England and comprises 150 pieces of bone. 30 of the pieces are game pieces, and the rest are shattered remains of the original board. The damage is thought to be deliberate. There's no sign of any obvious Anglo-Saxon influence in the design of the board and its pieces, but there are hints of the Viking style. That leads experts to believe it may have been made by an Anglo-Scandinavian craftsperson who carved the pieces from the antlers of red deer. There's no sign of paint or any coloring agent on the pieces, so the two sets of pieces must have been distinguished purely by their design. Why it was destroyed and then buried is unknown. Perhaps somebody was a really bad loser. The Middleham Jewel was found by amateur metal detectorist Ted Seaton as he walked along a horse trail close to Middleham Castle, Yorkshire, England, in 1985. It was a discovery that changed his life. The jewel is actually a gold pendant from the 15th century and may have once been used as a reliquary although its internal cavity was empty, save for a few scraps of fabric when it was found. The pendant is set with a blue sapphire and engraved on each side with religious scenes, including the crucifixion. Such is the elaborate nature of the piece that some historians feel it may have belonged to Anne Neville, the wife of Richard III. The blue of the sapphire, along with the presence of several female saints along the inscriptions, may suggest that the jewel was a gift given to assist with the process of childbirth. When Ted was granted permission to sell the jewel in 1986, he received 1.4 million pounds for it. That wasn't the end of the story. The British government refused permission for the jewel to be exported to its foreign buyer, 
and raised further funds for the Yorkshire Museum to buy it instead, eventually acquiring it for 2.5 million pounds. The statue of Ebe Il is one of the most striking looking sculptures you're ever likely to see. It's in such good condition that you could easily believe it to be a recent work, but it's anything but. In fact, the statue of Ebe Il is 4,400 years old. History records Ebe Il as a superintendent of the city-state of Mari in what's now Syria. He's depicted in a praying pose in a statue made of gypsum, decorated with lapis lazuli, shells, and schist. When the sculpture was first discovered by the French archaeologist André Perrault in January 1934, it was broken into two pieces. Perrault's team found the head on the outer court of the Temple of Ishtar and the body a few feet away underneath a small statue of King La Mi Marie. Some restoration and repair work was required to get the statue looking the way it does today, but none of the original features or materials were replaced as part of the work. The expressive style of the statue of Ebe Il, along with the quality of the craftsmanship that went into making it, is enough for it to be hailed as one of the world's greatest ancient masterpieces. The image etched onto the artifact known as the Lenape Stone is so controversial that most historians would prefer to dismiss it as a hoax than investigate it properly. It was broken in half when it was discovered, with the second piece found shortly after the first. Both discoveries took place in Bucks County, Pennsylvania in 1872. The artifact is so controversial because the scene on it seems to show a group of Native Americans hunting a woolly mammoth. That suggests an overlap between the existence of woolly mammoths and Native American tribes in the region. That ought to be an impossibility because mammoths became extinct in North America at least 10,000 years ago whereas the hunting tools shown in the carvings were invented no more than 2,000 years ago at most. Historians say the scene was carved into the stone long after it was broken in two, so it's not a genuine artifact. They also say that the carvings don't line up perfectly, which proves that the stone was already broken when they were made. Taking all that into account, we can say that the Lenape stone is probably a forgery, but there will always be an element of doubt. How would you feel about eating a 2,000-year-old lump of butter? We're reliably informed that it still contains plenty of flavor despite sitting out the centuries in an Irish bog before being unearthed in 2016. And if you were feeling especially adventurous, it'd still be edible. A man named Jack Conway was digging up peat moss to burn in the winter for heating near his home in County Meath when he came across the find and took it to the nearby Cavan County Museum, which identified it as ancient butter. Opinions vary about why so-called bog butter is often found in locations like this. Some people think it was put there as an offering of appeasement to ancient gods, while others think it might have been a deliberate act of food processing designed to change the butter's chemical composition and enhance the taste. The lack of oxygen and high levels of acid inside peat bogs are perfect for preserving food, so storage is another option. For the record, we don't think we'd be brave enough to taste it. Scientists would like us to believe that the Klerksdorp spheres are a natural phenomenon created by the process known as concretion. They say that the objects which are often found in mines in South Africa but don't appear anywhere else in the world are sediments that have been worn down and shaped by millions of years of weathering and exposure. Not every scientist is convinced by that idea. Although concretion can and does make shapes like this, the process doesn't explain why the Klerksdorp spheres contain metals that can't possibly have been created through concretion. That's not the only thing that goes against the idea of them having a natural origin. There's also the fact that almost all of them are the same shape and size, have the same red shade, and have a seam running around their center that makes them look almost like cricket balls. While the exterior of the sphere is harder than steel, the interior is soft and fibrous. That doesn't tally with the concretion idea either. If they weren't formed by concretion, then we have to consider that there was a degree of intelligent design involved in their creation, which is problematic. 
because they're 2.8 billion years old. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.